and I'm going to record. All right, there we go. So um, lots of people keep popping in. We've got quite a number signed up for today. I'm very excited to see you all. Thank you for being here. Once again, as you arrive, please mute yourself and there'll be plenty of opportunities to ask questions and talk in just a short while. Um, so uh, my name's Amy Graziano. As you can see um, on my little name there, I'm the chair of the Conservatory of Music and my email is on my picture, if you can see the whole picture. Uh, if you have any questions after this or during this, feel free to email me at any time. I'm here with Katie Silberman, who is our music administrative assistant out there. She waved and Katie is, um, well, without Katie, we'd all fall apart and not know what we're doing. So Katie is extremely valuable. And I'm here with some of our students, our majors and minors from a variety of different music programs. And um, we're going to introduce our students. And then after that, I'll do a short little overview of the music program at Chapman. And then we'll have question and answers from uh, between you and our students and us. So let's start with introducing our wonderful music students, majors and minors. And I wonder if each of you who are here could just give your name, uh, and it's in your little name right now, but if you could tell us your name, your major, your minor, what interest you have in music and your year uh, that you are at Chapman. And maybe we'll start with Emma B and then Devin and Hannah and then Emma T. Emma B, go ahead. Hi everyone, I'm Emma Brandel. I am a sophomore and I'm a BA in music with a vocal emphasis. I'm also a double major. I did a self-designed major um, that I called Ancient Cultures and Languages. So that's kind of exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> Perfect, thank you, Emma. Devin. Hi, my name is Devin Lopez. I am a general music minor and my major is actually uh, political science. Uh, I'm a senior graduating this December. Um, my in primary instrument is cello. Uh, I think, oh, I'm also a music tutor for some subjects here. Absolutely. Thank you, Devin. And Devin is a member of our, oh, weren't you a member of the Temianco Quartet? Of which yes. Is, yes, one of our prestigious string quartets. Very good. Hannah V, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Hannah Vicaney. I am a senior. I am a self-design major in video game development and a minor in music technology. Um, but I mostly play percussion and piano. And uh, I am one of the recording and post-production engineers uh, at Chapman. Wonderful. Thank you, Hannah. And Emma T. Hi, I'm Emma Tucker. I'm a senior music composition and oboe performance double major. And I'm also a music tutor. Great, thank you all. Thank you for being here. And um, all of you who are here with us can ask questions of our wonderful students in just a few minutes. Um, I'm going to give a short overview of our music program and show you a little virtual tour in a couple of minutes. Um, let, let me start the overview by saying that the Conservatory of Music is part of a College of Performing Arts at Chapman University. And Chapman is a liberal arts university, which means there's a very strong general education program, which means our students are very highly educated and have a good background in general ed. I think this is a tremendous strength of Chapman University, one of the really good things about the university. The College of Performing Arts is composed of the Department of Theater, Department of Dance, and the Conservatory of Music. And we do interdisciplinary performances together a um, couple times a year. We are trying to build programs right now that will do more of this, more interdisciplinary work between the three departments. Um, the Conservatory of Music offers four majors uh, that you can major in, a uh, Bachelor of Music degree in performance, Bachelor of Music in composition, Bachelor of Music music education, and a Bachelor of Arts in music. And I'll very briefly go through each one in a, um, just a, a minute. So what makes Chapman a good place for music students to be? There are many reasons, and I'll kind of go through the reasons that I think Chapman is a great place for music students we have amazing faculty, so world-class faculty, and 
if you apply and come for auditions, you will meet some of those faculty members. Maybe you've met some of them already. We are small. We are undergraduate in music, which means that everything is focused on the undergraduate student. So when there are opera roles or solos for the orchestra or solos in the choir, the undergraduate students are getting all of these opportunities for performance. You're not competing with graduate students, which is what happens at larger universities. Um, there's also a very big emphasis on personalized education at Chapman. So you get to know your teachers, your teachers get to know you, and it's very personalized. Um, what else? You can double major. You, you've uh, heard uh, several, two of our, both Emma's, I think, are both double majors. Um, it's very possible to double major and graduate in four years, graduate on time. You can double major in two music majors like Emma T, or you can do a music major in something else like Emma B is doing. Um, very possible. Um, the music major programs that we have are unique in several ways. And I love the uniqueness of our programs. So I'll briefly outline how they're unique. The performance degree, Bachelor of Music Performance, is quite flexible. We've trying to, to change our curriculum over the last few years to build in more flexibility. So the core of our performance program is a classical core of training, but there, is lo there are lots of opportunities to work with other styles. And here are some examples. Vocal performance now has um, modules of courses that students can take, musical theater, pop, jazz. Um, and so students can do those other styles as well as classical. Guitar performance is now starting next year, will actually incorporate contemporary guitar along with classical guitar. So um, those students will also learn pop jazz, world music styles as part of the requirements for the degree. Um, we have lots of jazz ensembles. We've got a large ensembles, we've got small ensembles, we've got vocal and instrumental jazz ensembles. Uh, we offer jazz lessons. So pretty strong jazz uh, offerings here at Chapman. The, the performance, instrumental performance programs really emphasize chamber music which is not uh, normal, at, it's not something you find everywhere, but it's, we think it's an important thing to do, emphasizing chamber music, and that is playing in small groups, right? Trios, quartets, quintets, and so forth. Um, this, we think is very useful for instrumentalists because so many jobs now, when you graduate, have to do with the working in chamber music. There are fewer and fewer orchestral jobs working in big, ensembles. So chamber music, if you're interested in performing, is a really good viable option for after graduation. So we really emphasize uh, chamber music. There are lots of performance opportunities um, here for our chamber music groups. In piano, if you're interested in piano, we offer both a solo piano and a collaborative piano program. Uh, so you can learn to be a soloist or to play collaboratively with others. Again, something that might help with jobs in the future. Composition, our Bachelor of Music Composition program, and I think there are several people here interested in that today, um, is unique because it's, it's an undergraduate program where students get their works read and performed on a regular basis every semester. And this is done with our new music ensemble, which performs student um, per student works every semester, but also we bring in professional ensembles who do readings and work with our composition majors um, to get their works read and performed. And that's, I love that about the comp program. Now, Bachelor of Music and Music Education, we also have a really unique and, and quite incredible program if you're interested in music education. Um, I'll explain first that with music education, in the state of California, all programs undergraduate are called pre-certification programs. So you do four years and you get a music education degree, but then after you get your bachelor's degree, that's when you do your certification and get your teaching credential. That's the state of California. At Chapman, we have a five-year program where the first four years you do your undergraduate degree and you get your Bachelor of Music in Music Ed. And then in a fifth year, in one year's time, you finish a teaching credential and a Master's of Arts in Teaching degree. So after five years, you've got a bachelor's degree 
and a master's degree and a teaching credential, you're highly employable. You get out and you get a job at a higher pay rate than if you just have a bachelor's degree. And that's a really unique program. And I think it's a, a fantastic offering. And finally, the BA Music, Bachelor of Arts in Music, is a less performance oriented degree, a little bit more academic, but it's our most flexible degree. You can essentially design your own program, your own emphasis within, in music within the Bachelor of Arts in Music degree. So it's a very uh, flexible degree. What are some other things that make music at Chapman great? Well, you can major in music and you can add a minor or you could just be a music minor without being a music major. And we have several very wonderful minors. We do have a performance minor for those who are not majors. And I believe Devin uh, is, is a general music minor, which is our performance minor. But we have a film music, music technology and music business minors. And these can be combined with music majors. So you can do it as a non-music major or you can do these as music majors as well. And of course, adding one of these minors to a music major adds breadth and depth and all sorts of interesting connections to the music industry. I want to mention that at Chapman, we have the Dodge College of Film and Media Arts, which is, I think, the fourth highest ranked film school in the country. It's very highly ranked. And our film music classes, our music business classes, our music technology classes, work together with the film school here, with the Dodge College classes in collaboration. Um, this is, for one example, our film music composition classes are scoring student films in their student film production classes. And that's a, a amazing opportunity for students to have here. We are really close to Los Angeles, which is a world center for the music industry and for performance. And because of that, we can bring in top industry performers and industry people to give master classes, recitals, and to lecture and teach our classes. In fact, uh, here is an example the head of music legal department at Paramount Pictures teaches for us. He, uh, we, we have a faculty member who knows him and said, Hey, you want to team teach this class with me? And he's like, Sure, that sounds like fun. So we have. Big, big name and really important industry people who are teaching our classes. The president of Disney Music has been a guest lecturer in our music business classes several times over. So we can bring in really top-notch people, which lead to internships, lead to networking and connections for all of our students. We bring in performers and ensembles, of course, from Los Angeles to do master classes and recitals. Uh, just recently, a few weeks ago, we had Kristen Chenoweth, the Tony and Emmy nominated um, uh, actress and singer here to do a really big master class. She did one with theater, dance and music students, both majors and minors, and it was really cool. Our faculty, our music faculty, plays with LA Opera, LA Chamber Orchestra, in various Hollywood studios, and all of these interactions with the industry, with professionals, with artists, open opportunities for our students uh, to network, to get internships, to get jobs. Um, bringing it into Orange County, which is where Chapman actually is located, we have the Pacific Symphony, which is our Orange County professional orchestra. And the director of the Pacific Symphony, uh, the music director, Carl St. Clair, is actually a Chapman Presidential oh, Fellow, which means he conducts clinics, master classes for our students every semester. He provides internships, he provides free tickets for our students, and um, it's a very good opportunity for us to have the music director of Pacific Symphony as a Presidential Fellow at Chapman. On our very own campus, we have the Musco Center for the Arts, which is our performance venue and we perform there, but professional ensembles and artists also come and do performances for the public at the Musco Center. And those professionals provide clinics and masterclasses for our students. Um, for example, Kishi Bashi came just again last month, I think, a world-class violinist, and he did um, a masterclass with our string students. Kishibashi is also a whole lot of other things. You could look him up. He's, he's known in lots of different musical realms, but he worked with our string students. Um, Musco Center collaborates with Disney to do um, a concert series. And a couple of years ago, 
Michael Giacchino, the famous film music composer of Incredibles, and he he did all, all he's done so many film scores. Um, he came and he directed a concert where our students played with the professional musicians and they were all playing together under the direction of Michael Giacchino. They got to work with him. It was amazing. Um, speaking of Musco Center for the Arts, which is a world-class facility. Now I'm going to show you, I'm gonna to go to my slideshow and share my screen so that I can um, show you some pictures, a very brief, very brief picture. So let me see if I can get this. So, okay, now I'm gonna to try to do my best. Let's see if I can um, present, put it in present mode, yay. Okay, can you all see it? Yes? I can't hear you or see you, but that's okay. Yes, it's good. Wonderful, thank you. Um, you know what, this is not the beginning. So I'm gonna go to the beginning of the slideshow and do it again. There we go, here's the beginning, Oliphant Hall. This is our main music building. Uh, we have two music buildings on campus. The second one is kind of behind this one and attached, but this is the main entrance to the music building. Over here on the side, you see our orchestral rehearsal hall and there's the main entrance. And as we go here, there is the inside of our orchestral rehearsal hall with our orchestra rehearsing. Um, and it's nighttime, you can see it's dark outside. Here is the same space, the orchestral recital or rehearsal hall in the daytime now with a small chamber group, one of our wind groups um, rehearsing with their coach. And here is the same space with the percussion ensemble rehearsing um, in the rehearsal hall. This is our recital hall, um, salmon recital hall, it's called. It's kind of a weird picture, but um, it, this seats about 100 to 150 uh, people in the audience. We do very small uh, recitals. We do somewhat medium-sized uh, chamber concerts here in this hall. And I want you to notice these windows up here, which are the recording studios where uh, all of our music tech students like Hannah V will record um, performances that happen here. And in fact, here's a view from one of those recording studios down into Salmon Recital Hall. I think it's set up here. They're setting up for an opera performance and you can see how they use the monitors and all kinds of, I'm not a tech person, but it's really cool state of the art recording facilities. Here is another view from the other window, I think, again, looking down into Salmon Recital Hall. Um, here is a view of one of our music technology classes, and this is our main music tech lab. This is one of several tables. So we've got a, a row here and several other rows that go back for many different stations with computers and computer keyboards, of course, and a lot, uh, music keyboards. Um, there's Professor Barecki, our music tech director. This is one of our classrooms our, for academic classes like music theory. Oh, music student lounge where students can lounge on the couch and rest. Uh, the student lounge, actually, this shows just one half of it. There's a table, a big table in the middle of the room. There are computer stations all along the edges of the room where computers can, computers, students can use computers. Um, there's microwave and, you know, all kinds of little refrigerator in here. This is one of our jazz bands performing in one of the performance venues on campus. This is not in the music building, um, but it's one of our performance venues on campus. And this is the Musco Center for the Arts, which isn't it gorgeous? It really truly looks like that. That's a real picture. It's all lit up from inside, uh, getting ready for a performance. It's got that big lawn in front of it. It's really a stunning building. This is a view from inside the Musco Center for the Arts. This is the stage looking out into the audience. It's, um, it's a magnificent hall and it has amazing acoustics. Uh, and it has been cited by um, critics as having amazing acoustics. Here is uh, opera performance on this Musco stage one year. Here is the orchestra. Uh, I think they're in the pit there uh, on at Musco. And here's a shot of the orchestra and the choirs together in a joint performance on the Musco stage. And up, oh, and then I brought us back to our first slide, which is Oliphant Hall, our music building. And that's it. Stop sharing.
Da da! I'm done finally with the little um, overview. And now that wasn't so bad. I did that pretty fast. And now we're going to uh, do a question and answer session. Uh, this is your opportunity to ask questions of me or Katie, and especially to ask questions of our students. So you can ask anything about the program you're interested in, um, practicing, dorm life, campus life, um, the music building, any kind of questions um, you want to ask. Uh, and our students are the best source of knowledge for these sorts of questions. Uh, you can ask them, you know, raise your hand or say something, or you can put it in the chat and Katie and I will be um, monitoring the chat to see uh, if there are any questions in there. Uh, so uh, who wants to start? Who has a question? Um, so I was just wondering, um, when you want to double major in like, um, in like music and like something else, um, I want to double major in um, vocal performance and psychology. And I was wondering, um, A, how many classes do you have to take? And, um, and B, what's the process for starting that? Because I just applied as a music major. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, let me answer some of the technical things and then maybe Emma and Emma, who are double majors, can um, add a little bit in there. Um, so if you apply as a music major, that's probably the best thing to do because then you get your audition and you can be accepted uh, to the conservatory. Uh, and when you, the second major is done when you get here. So over the summer, you can contact the psychology department and I can help you do that. And um, you can, and, and tell them that you would like to do a second major in psychology and they'll get you all set up. And that happens after you're admitted and after usually right at the beginning of the first year, you can do that and and declare it and it's an easy process to declare another major um and then how many classes well it, the psych psychology major is a bachelor of arts so it's not a huge major the music majors it depends the bachelor of arts and music is not huge the music performance if you want vocal performance it's a big major however it's totally possible to double major and we have students who do it um Emma and Emma, do you want to mention something about double majors? Um, I don't know which one of you wants to go first. I, I mean, you're probably going to have something relevant to doing something other than music, but um, my biggest advice for double majoring is to like be really good about your time management and splitting your time. Because I will sometimes be like, do a really good job in all of my composition stuff and be like, oh no, I forgot to be a performance major this week. So just make sure that you remember to do both of those things. But it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's totally doable. It's not, I mean, it's, of course it's hard. Anything is hard, but it's yeah. not, you're, you can totally do it, don't worry. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Emma B, do you want to add something? Yeah, Um. so I actually, since, for me, since I was doing a self-design major, um, it took me a little bit of time to actually get it like scheduled in. So I'm looking at a little bit more credit hours each semester, just because I'm trying to finish one of my BAs in three years instead of four. But if you already want to double major in psychology and you like, you know, sign on and get ready, I think that that'll be totally doable. Um, I actually know somebody who is a vocal performance major and a psychology major as well, I think. So it's definitely a thing that has happened. So yeah, you're, you'll be you'll be fine. <laughs> that is so cool. Thank you so much. Amy, we have a couple questions in the chat. Oh, okay, great. And Emma, were you going to say something else, Emma T? Yes, I was going to say to go find whoever the psychology, like, uh, academic advisor or chair person is to help you do that early in case you like miss some prerequisite or just so everything's on track even if you don't start right away just to start planning it i would just get in contact with that person okay Great. thank you so much thank you um there is a message in the chat and it, it is about when callback auditions are for people who submitted their applications and supplements early action katie can oh, you I answer have that Okay, I'm sorry, can you re I repeat that one? That one's not in my chat, so I have oh. some different ones. Oh, okay. Um, this question says that the student is wondering when the callback auditions are for people who submitted their applications and creative supplements early action. All right, so the early action uh, callback date 
is for next weekend, next Saturday, the 20th. And I know that um, many people have gone through the music conservatory, have been reviewed and they're now in admissions. Admissions is working hard to get those callback letters out to you. They should be showing up in your applicant status page or as an email. So please definitely check your applicant status page. And if you're looking to complete your application in time for the early action deadline, you will need to sign up for that virtual audition next Saturday. Great, thank you. Um, I have one more chat here in mine and then Katie, maybe you can go through the ones that are in yours. Uh, this question says, how vigorous is Chapman in terms of both general ed and conservatory? And um, I'm not sure what you mean by vigorous, but if you mean um, how strong, how much emphasis is there, I think that there's a strong emphasis on both. The general education is important and all students have to do the general ed at Chapman, no matter what your major is. Um, the general ed is not that big, however, and you can cross count some of the courses from your major with the general ed. And the conservatory, if you're going to be a Bachelor of Music major, it's pretty intense. There's a lot of courses and it's a lot of practicing and performing, which is what you know music students generally come here for, so they like it. Um, so yeah, it's pretty vigorous and pretty intense, but it's a, it's a great time, I think, for everybody. Um, let's do some of, uh, Katie, some of yours, because there are actually two more popped up in mind, but what do you okay. have in your chat? I have one that's up. Uh, what is the dorm life the first two years and are there any music composition internships? And then Very I have another one after that. Okay. Do um, Devin or Hannah, do you want to address dorm life? Maybe did you, you lived in the dorms your first, I think you have to, you have to live in the dorm the first, is it two years or? Yeah, it's now, I believe two years. Um, and when they mean in a dorm, it doesn't necessarily have to be the on-campus uh, buildings. We actually have two residences that are off campus, um, both I believe in Anaheim. Um, and so those also have shuttles that are able to bring you to campus if you don't have your own personal transportation. Um, so they make it very easy for you to be able to get to campus. Wonderful, thanks. Uh, Emma B, you're gonna say something? Yeah, so I'm actually living in Chapman Grand right now. So I just wanted to say um, it is really nice. Um, so if you get the chance to live at Chapman Grand, definitely take it. Um, the only thing is the shuttle does like um, make sure that you get to the shuttle on time for your class because they only run, it's like a 20 minute drive. So that's really the only thing. It's a little far, but um, it's really nice here. The RAs are super nice and the facilities are nice and it's quiet. So yeah, that's <laughs> just wanted that's to share great. that. Thank you, Emma. I think they actually just changed it to one year because of COVID. So I think you're only required now as of like this, this school year right now to live on campus for one year. It used to be two in the past, but I think now, because they're encouraging people to live off campus since they're right. so, they're impacted that way. Thanks, Emma. Now, do they still, uh, I know for the first year, they try to arrange students in dorms with similar areas, you know, so all the, I think all of uh, performing arts students were together. Is that right, Hannah? You're, you're nodding. To you. Yeah, so my freshman year, I had my, my roommate was, it was me, and then a new, um, my friend Mona, who's a vocal education major, and then her name was Sarah, she was a dance major, and just next door to us were theater majors, and everyone's in the same dorm, and I met, I met some of my greatest friends there, like I met Emma and Devin back then, uh, mostly because we all lived in the same place together, we were all walking to the same place, the dining hall's right there, you're all there, it's a really great way to just like meet people in your area. Great, thank you, Hannah. And I think the end of that question was are there composition internships? And um, there are always going to be internships that we can help you to find. But Emma, do you have any, any your composition major, do you have anything to add about internships? I'm wondering if maybe whoever asked that question could clarify internship. Um, I There's nothing like Chapman specific that's offered as any extracurricular like professional development thing, but I, excuse me, oh my goodness. I personally did a couple summer festivals through just like applying for stuff and just putting myself out there. And I found something that I really like that I've been going to and I have an extra community outside of Chapman of composers that I um, have been working with the past couple years. So 
I think there, there are lots of opportunities and the faculty will help you find them, but I think Chapman specific things there aren't, but I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah. Thank you, Emma. There are, um, we are starting to find and add internships now that we've, we're developing our music business uh, minor program. So we're getting more of those and internships can be taken as part, as a class, in fact, and you can earn credit for, for them. Um, I've got a whole bunch more questions that popped up. Um, let me take one of mine and then we'll go back to Katie's second one. Uh, so we did that. We did vigorous. Okay. Are there music production beyond recording facilities in the conservatory or do classes in music tech take place in the Dodge Center? Um, all of our music tech classes take place in music. We have wonderful facilities in Hannah. You're a music tech minor and, and a recording engineer. You want to describe yeah. some of those? So music production is different than sound design, which is a thing at Dodge. The only class that you take at Dodge and you don't have to take it is Pro Tools certification because that happens through Dodge too. Um, that's the only class that music tech can take within Dodge. Uh, it, the sound design is a Dodge specific and it's very similar, but it's more in terms of like film, film versus just in general or like music production. We have uh, two different recordings, like recording specific studios in the music building. And then there's like three different music tech rooms. And then when we go to Musco, we also record those concerts um, ourselves with um, like uh, equipment that we bring over her from the studios. Same with any on Chapman concert that's off campus we we all record those um but uh if you're a first year student I don't know if you can take it your the first semester but you can definitely take uh principles of music technology in the spring which is like every music major has to take it, it but it's like the gateway into the music tech department you you literally get like a bite-sized piece of literally everything you'll do and it's I, I if you're really interested in it I highly recommend it yeah, thanks, Hannah. Yeah, that class is is uh, required for uh, most of the music majors and all music majors and most of the minors as well. So, oh, you know, so, all, go ahead. sorry, I just also read you have to be taking a music tech class or be a engineer or something to get access to those rooms. They're not open to anybody. That's right. Thank you. Very good. Um, Katie, do you have um, another question yeah. here? Can you double major in composition and piano collaborative? Yes. Yes, you can. Absolutely. Um, you can double major in most of our programs. There are a few that aren't allowed, but most are allowed. So yeah. Um, would it be possible to major in business and minor in music business? Yes, absolutely. We have quite a number of students who are doing that. Um, is there an audition for the music business minor? The, Three music minors require an interview with our music minor coordinator who isn't here today. And you can just contact me to set that up if you're interested. Uh, it's not, and you do have to audition for the general music minor, which is the performance minor. But film music, music tech, and music business, you don't audition, you just have an interview. Um, where do you practice? Are there practice rooms? Students, you wanna take that question? Yeah, so we have um, practice rooms on, I believe, every floor. Maybe, maybe the third floor doesn't. Um, but yeah, there's practice rooms on every floor. There's only been one time in my entire time at Chapman that every practice room was full. So whenever you want to practice, you are almost certainly going to be able to find some place to practice in the music building. Yep, very good. And there are practice rooms that have upright pianos, there are practice rooms that have grand pianos, every practice room has a piano. A few of them have digital pianos too. And piano majors get to reserve the piano, grand piano room. In fact, piano majors and any student with piano as their major instrument, because sometimes a composition major will have piano as a major instrument, for example. Um, so anyone with piano as major instrument gets to reserve the grand piano practice rooms in advance and have their times all set for those for those rooms. Um, I just wanted to chime in that there's 20 practice rooms and they're open from 7 a.m. till midnight. Till midnight, every day, seven days a week. And even on holidays, we our buildings remain open. Um, if you are not accepted as a music major, is there still an opportunity to be accepted into another major at Chapman? Yes, if you, if you apply as a music major and you're not accepted, 
admissions will, um, if you put down a second choice of major, admissions will then consider you for that second choice of major. Um, are there music production beyond recording facilities in the conservatory or do classes? Oh, we already, uh, do, 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 do. we already answered most of this, right? Do first year students have access to music production facilities? Um, anyone who is taking, as Hannah said, a music tech class or is, is a music tech minor um, has access to the facilities that they're using at the time. So it is, it is special access, but you can get it. Um, what is the process based on if your pre-screen audition was passed? Katie, can you answer that question? Sure. Um, so the, when the pre-screen is, uh, well, uh, sorry, you submit your pre-screen after you submit your common application, you get access to your pre-screen, to upload your pre-screen in your applicant status page. It does take 24 to 48 hours to get access to that. So don't stress out if you're trying to do it all at one time when you're submitting the common app, you have to submit the common app first and then your pre-screen. Once admissions processes that, it comes into the conservatory and the area director for your primary instrument will review it. So um, for example, if you're a composition major, only at that time are you being reviewed for your instrument area. And then the composition person will also take a look before your in-person or virtual audition at your composition scores. Um, once your pre-screen is reviewed, then um, if it's pass, then you'll get an email or an applicant status page update or probably both that you have been invited for a callback. Um, there is a question about regular um, decision application deadlines and that is January 15th. And if you are invited for a callback based on your pre-screen, those dates will be um, Saturday in February, the 5th, 12th, 19th, depending on your instrument and then the last Sunday, the 27th. Great, thank you. Um, the pre-screen is not different from the creative supplement. That's this, uh, the creative supplement includes the pre-screen video. So the, the creative supplement has a couple of questions where you might have, depending on your major, you may have to upload other things or answer some essay questions or um, actually that's not an essay question. It's, a, it's just a short answer um, mm -hmm. paragraph like why Chapman, why music major? Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Katie. Um, are there performance and or theory classes in the music business minor? Performance classes, no, the music business minor doesn't include performance, but theory classes that um, there are, there's one section of the music business minor where you have to choose, do you take, you could take a theory or a um, kind of a music studies, music history kind of a class, uh, one of those within the music business minor. Um, are you able to learn a new second instrument? Yes, the answer, of course, you can take as many instruments as you want for private. We have private lessons and everything. Um, it looks like we apply and are accepted based on the common, common app and creative supplement. And if there is an in-person audition, right. So Katie, you just answered that about the dates for in-person auditions. Um, do you have any more on your end, Katie, that have come through? Okay, uh, here's another one. Submitted the application yeah. early action for composition. Um, are there any steps you're missing? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, when, do, when does the, so uh, admissions is still doing callback um, letters, right? They're, they mm -hmm. haven't finished them yet. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't, right. you're gonna say something, Katie? Right. Um, if you submitted your creative supplement by um, November 1st or even November 5th, if you got in a little bit late because it takes a while to upload after the November 1st um, common app deadline, you should still be able to get time to have that callback letter come back to you. Um, you can reach out to your admissions counselor if you like, if you're an EA person, but do know that if you didn't get your creative supplement uploaded in time, so for example, you, you made the November 1st deadline for EA, but you didn't get your creative supplement uploaded until this week, it's possible then that you'll just be rolled over to regular. You won't be denied at EA. We will still consider you. It'll just be rolled over. You'll be invited back for one of those February audition dates. Right. And if anyone has questions about um, making sure that they got all the steps in and that they're not missing anything and uh, whether or not they missed a callback email or, or that then I would 
advise you to contact your admissions uh, person, your admissions counselor uh, for questions like that. Um, is there is the pre-screen different from the creative supplement? Katie, you explain that it's the product part of the same process. Um, what happens in the callback sessions? Uh, callback sessions are there. There will be a couple of Zoom ones, and there will be in-person ones. And they are auditions where there'll be like a little information session. For the in-person ones, we have a, a live student panel who can answer questions. Uh, and then you have an actual audition where you one one by one have a, um, an audition with the with the faculty from the area on the instrument that you're applying for. If you're a composition, you apply for whatever your major instrument is. BA, you you uh, do an audition on whatever your major instrument is. That's that's the performance audition. Um, for performers, that's it. For BA composition music education, there are other things that you submit during as part of the creative supplement and then that all of that together is taken into account with the audition everyone does a performance audition if you're applying as a major if you are interested in a minor again you would do an interview um if we submitted the creative supplement late will it be considered if not can we resubmit as regular decision so katie i think you addressed that it'll be rolled over to regular admission if you submit the creative supplement late um, okay, callback auditions, it depends because everyone has to go in one by one. So usually it's in the order that you sign up it for the audition and every and if you're the first one in, it'll be like a, what in about an hour if all together. And if you're one of the later ones to sign up, it might take the two, three hours but you're doing other things before the actual audition. We have lots of, um, we do student panel, we do tours of the music building, we have food for you. Uh, we've got lots of things to do while you wait. Um, do you need to, no, companies are, pianists are provided for audition callbacks. So there will be pianists if you need it. Um, any other questions on the chat, Katie? Um, yes, someone asked about how many pieces needed to be performed in a callback session. That's actually on the website, at, right, in the mm -hmm. admissions part of the website. And if you email me, I can email you the direct link to go to to uh, find that information of what you need for the callback. Um, the audition, the whole audition, it, well, you will, of course, get all this information when you audition and when it's time to audition. But the audition sessions, I think, how long do we set them up for? It's like three, four, three hours total. The um, virtual audition session, I believe, is a three to four hour window. And you actually will also meet um, before your individual audition with um, if you're a comp BA or you you'll meet with the area director from that area as well. Okay. Um, Emma, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, um, I just was thinking about another question that was asked a couple minutes ago um, about learning a second or new instrument. And I just wanted to say, like, of course, you can take like extra lessons and stuff, but also a lot of the small ensembles um, will like you will be kind of given instruments. Like, for example, I'm a vocalist, but um, I have grown up playing instruments. And so I joined the early music ensemble and then like you know, if you play flute, then he'll have you play recorder. And, you know, if you play guitar, you'll play Baroque guitar or something like that. So sometimes that small ensembles like that, I know that there's like mariachi and other things like sometimes that can be fun to just like kind of stretch your legs in something without putting like the load of like an extra credit on because they're half credits. Um, so that's also an option. Great, great point. And um, and Emma T, don't you play in new music and play other instruments, too? And yes. I am also in early music and the new music ensemble. I, well, I'm an oboist, but I've played Dulcian, which is like a predecessor to the Baroque bassoon, a bunch of recorders. I do a fair amount of singing in that ensemble too, which I think is really fun, really good for your ear training and oral skills, highly recommend. Um, what else? I think that's it. I'm sure I've done stuff and I'm just forgetting, but, oh, I think I've played piano in new music ensemble at one point, <laughs> but there's, there's lots of opportunities for you to do stuff. Yeah. That's not you. your major. Yeah, go ahead.
Thanks. And Emma B, you mentioned mariachi. That's another one of our ensembles and students sing or play other instruments that are not their major instruments. We have a pep band where string students will learn how to play a wind or brass instrument just so they can be in pep band because it's fun. Uh, so there's lots of opportunities. Um, okay. Does anyone have a question that they want to actually ask with their voice in person, which is I love to hear people's voices. Does anyone have a question? Parents, if you're out there, do you have questions? Yes, Erica, please. Um, I have a question about the private lessons. Um, so do you stay with one teacher for um, the entire time or do you audition um, for different studios like every semester? And I guess, like, is that built as a part of the BA program or is it like depending on the individual teachers? That's a that's a great question. Um, Devin, do you want to answer about t t being in a teacher studio? I just you're a um, you play a lot. Yeah. Um, so for I'm a cellist and we only have one cello professor at Chapman. Um, so I've been with him for all four years now. Um, I believe right now we have two violin professors um, and two viola professors. Um, so I don't know the process exactly for how that's decided between uh, the professors for those instruments. Um, but yeah, it, it's just also nice to be able to get to know the professor that you're working with for all these four, uh, usually four years that you're here. Um, and it, it, yeah, it builds a really nice relationship between the two. Thank you, Devin. Yeah, so um, you will, you can have, um, pre, what, what are they called? Like a sample lesson with a teacher. You could have a sample lesson with both of the violin teachers, for example, and then decide which teacher you would prefer. Um, and that is taken into account. So if the teacher has room in their studio, you will be put with, placed with the teacher you prefer uh, if you have one. If you, if you don't have a preference, that program director for strings will decide what seems to be the best match for you. And the goal is, as Devin said, to stay with the same teacher all four years and really build a relationship. However, if you, there's some, something happens, you want to move to a new teacher, that's totally possible too. We, we don't make you stay if you're not happy. Um, good question, Erica. There are a couple more questions popped up. How many students do you typically admit and how many music majors? We typically admit what? Between about 35, 40? Well, there we admit, our class is about 40 to 50 40. on average, but um, that's not the actual ad admit number, yeah, right? Right. So that's the a number of people who come each year, and I don't have I don't have the other figures for you at this time. Right. So we're trying to build a class of approximately you know thirty five to forty new majors each year, um, but we admit more than that because not everyone will come. Of course, uh, hopefully most people will. Um, we have approximately 150 music majors right now. Uh, we also have approximately 150 music minors. Um, many of them are music majors as well. So there's, you know, cross counting with major and minor, but we have a lot of music minors with those different minors. Um, oh, thank you, Katie. Double majors. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Absolutely. If your pre-screen is approved, does that mean you are almost accepted? That's a good question. Um, it doesn't actually mean that. The pre-screen just means you get to come and do an audition. And then at the audition, um, they see they see you. Uh, and, and most students will come for an actual audition or do an audition via Zoom. If you can't come, do one of the Zoom auditions. Um, and that's a little extra, extra um, assessment of the performance aspect. And then if you're applying for a non-performance degree, uh, there, there's the rest of the creative supplement. You, you know, you submit whatever, a little statement and um, a composition of portfolio that's looked at. Um, so all of that has to then be assessed before you're actually accepted. So the pre-screen is the first process and then comes the audition. And then we see about being accepted. Good question. Admissions uh, also needs to review the application after that for academics as well. That's right. Thank you, Katie. So you have to be admitted to the conservatory and then also to the university. And it's and those are two separate processes. Good. 
other questions. What else can we answer for you? Live questions. Anybody else want to answer or ask a question? Oh, there's a, is there someone raised their hand? I see. Uh, Martin, is Martin still here? Yes. Did you have a question? Yeah, I, I have two questions if you'll let me indulge. Please. Um, the first is, uh, how has the whole pandemic and everything affected like doing performances and concerts, that kind of stuff? That is a great question. I'm going to let the students answer that. Um, Emma, Devin, Hannah, you're, uh, and both Emma's, Emma T, you want to go first? Yes. So I see that you're also listed as composition. So I'll start in that regard. So when the pandemic happened, I was a sophomore. This is spring my sophomore year and then I came back as a senior. So in that time, I had gotten exactly one work read and then I had my senior recital last week and that was the first official performance of my music at Chapman, <laughs> which, you know, it is what it is. It's just really funny that in the four years that I had been a major, I hadn't actually seen a performance of anything that I had written until, thank you so much, Hannah, um, <laughs> until that day. Um, but as far as like performance, some people took it harder than others, to be completely honest. It was, um, it was a nice time to practice. It was a really nice time to do like individual work on yourself that you don't really get at school. Cause you know, if you're in rehearsal after rehearsal day in, day out, sometimes practicing is like, that's the last thing I want to do right now. But you know, since we don't have on or didn't have ensembles at that time, I personally really liked taking the time for myself, but also it's like, man, I don't get to share this with other people, which is kind of the, one of the really great things about being a music major. So it was, it was definitely hard. Yeah. But it, there were, you know, I mean, you have to look on the bright side at some point, if not, it's going to eat away at you. Um, in terms of this semester though, a lot of stuff, what was masked, um, we're still doing all of the performances that we normally do. I think there's fewer guest performances. Like fewer ensembles are coming in, but we're stu still doing all of our like student output of stuff. So I hope that answers that. Yeah, that's good. Um, Devin, Hannah, uh, Emma B, do you want to say something? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I know for me, I'm in percussion ensemble, and that was really strange because we have all of every percussion instrument you can think of, we have them at Chapman and, and we have the facilities. But at home, I know for a lot of people, like I only have small equipment. I don't own a four and a third or a five octave marimba. I don't own, own uh, my own snare drum. I don't own timpani. Hey, so it, we, we ended up doing a lot more like smaller collaborative pieces where it's like, hey, this piece is, we found this piece, it's written for whatever instrumentation you have, but here's the notes. And so we all played, hey, whatever, whatever we had. There was one guy who literally played on like a, like a pad, a drum pad, because he didn't have any equipment. But uh, back in person, we do, we're doing like huge percussion ensemble works because we're like, we've been missing this. We need this back. Yeah. Thank you, Hannah. Um, Emma B., what was the question? Sorry, I missed it. Well, what has happened to performances given the pandemic? And I think um, if we could, if maybe you and Devin could answer a little bit about what's happening this semester, because we are back in person. Everybody is masked inside. There's an inside mask mandate, but we now have permission to be un masked while performing on stage. That's a county wide um, new policy that just happened because everything's going quite well with the COVID numbers in Orange County, California. But Emma and Devin, do you have something to describe about this semester's performances? Um, yeah, so I am in choir and I'm in early music ensemble and both of those, um, my choir concerts tomorrow actually, um, we are keeping the masks on because we are in a venue off campus um, and it's in a church. So we're going by their policies, which is to keep masks on. But um, other than that, it's a completely normal concert. We just have black matching masks to go with our concert blacks. And um, yeah, early music, it's, uh, I mean, I'm playing strings and singing and winds. And so I just take the mask off for wind instruments and then put it back on for everything else. Um, so yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, it's pretty normal um, other than that. So. Great, thanks, Emma. Devin? Yeah, I mean, kind of just what, uh... Emma just said, um, 
performances are pretty much what they used to be um, before we were sent home a year and a half ago. Um, the only change really is just that we're wearing masks. Um, now with the new guidance, we might uh, be able to be more relaxed with it on campus. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty back to normal uh, pre-COVID and all that. Great, thank you, Devin. Um, so <laughs> I, I just read Emma T's uh, favorite accessory for masks, yes. Um, does anyone have any final questions? We're coming up on an hour and I don't wanna keep anybody, but any final questions and, that you have for our students or, or me or Katie? And I don't see any hands up and I don't see anybody jumping in there to talk. Um, okay, so if you have questions, please email me. Uh, and in our last two minutes, I wondered if each of our students could just like give um, what you think is the best thing about Chapman, the things that you value about Chapman, maybe, you know, in 20 seconds. <laughs> What are the the your your big things that you value about Chapman? And let's do it. The order in my screen is Hannah V, and then Emma B, Devin, and Emma T. Go ahead, Hannah V. Well, the fact that I'm able to do as much as I am, I'm in percussion ensemble, I'm in band, I'm in orchestra, I'm in, I'm a accompanying choir for all their performances, and I get to play in the piano recitals. And I'm not even a major, but I still get to do what I love literally every day. And I have the staff is so supportive. Like I'm having a senior recital next year. Like it's it's really exciting, and to have that support means so much to me, especially after this pandemic. And like learning my love of music is so strong. Like that, it, it, I wouldn't get this literally anywhere else. Thank you, Hannah. Emma B. Yeah, I would definitely say the size. I mean, I love the size of the campus. It just feels so like homey and I everybody knows everybody um, and so friendly. And I wouldn't be able to do like a self-designed major and a double major at the same time. And even my BA, it's I'm also kind of like self-designing what I want to do with it. Um, and it's all hands-on and you really get one-on-one -on -one time with your professors and you really can't get that in a bigger school. So I would say the size of Chapman and the music program is really great. Thank you, Emma B. Devin. Yeah, also the uh, size of the school for me. Um, we have a very um, low student to uh, professor ratio. Um, so the, prof the professors really get to know you, um, get to know like your interests and um, what you want to do after you actually leave Chapman. Um, and I even have professors that I've met once or twice my freshman year who still recognize me and um, I can still reach out to them for different things. So that would be it for me. Thank you, Devin. Very good. Emma T. I'm trying to think of something that wasn't already said, but I agree very strongly with everything that everyone has already said. Ah, oh, man, you should have gone first. Uh, Next time you'll go first. No, 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 it's okay. Don't, I'm just, I would say the faculty, I swear, is like a different breed at Chapman. They're like particularly willing to support you, like without being provoked, like, I, if you briefly mention, oh, I'm having a hard time with this, they're like, okay, cool. I already sent five emails. You will be given this, this, and this resource. Don't worry. I have your back. Like that's an exaggeration, but I'm sure that's happened. Um, I feel incredibly supported by this faculty and especially going forward, like Devin was saying, and if you want to study, you know, go into a master's, go into the field or something like they're really people that you can pick up the phone and call 10 years later and be like, hey, this is what I'm up to or hey, I need your help or something. And they will absolutely no questions asked support you. So you really don't find that anywhere else. These people in particular. Great. Thank you, Emma. Thanks to um, all of our student panelists for being here. And thank you, uh, Katie for being here, who's been, you know, or kind of coordinating all of the chats and everything. And uh, everyone who attended, thank you so much for being here. My email is up on my picture there. And it please email me anytime if you have questions. And I hope to see you all at auditions at some point. Thank you all. We're going to end. Thank you. Bye.